Salut everyone, in this video, we did benchmark KDE versus Hyperland for gaming. Are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. About one month ago, I did release a video which was showcasing Gnome versus KDE on Wayland for gaming. I'm going to put the link in the description below if you're interested about the result. After this video, I had a lot of feedback. A lot of you guys were like, hey, we want to see the testing with Hyperland versus KD. So I didn't put Gnome in the mix because it's a lot of benchmark and because we had a good idea of where Gnome was positioning itself versus KD. Now for the little story about the methodology, because I need to talk about it, we went into uh, some sort of like roller coaster when I had to uh, switch from uh, KD to Hyperland to, to do all the bench. And while I was testing the performance of Garuda KDE, Mocha, which was, by the way, like a, a pretty good surprise. I didn't make a short format video about it, but I'm going to put the link in the description for the live stream if you are interested about this flavor of Garuda. I was like, hey, you know what? Maybe we should switch to Hyperland flavor of Garuda because now, yes, uh, Garuda come with an ISO with Hyperland delivered out of the box and kind of like do the benchmark out of it because again like the result for the, the mocha version of garuda were actually pretty good and while i started to do the bench on hyperland i noticed the perf was a little bit under and when i say a little bit under it was quite under so i start to wonder like what did they do is that uh, the dev from garuda who did like some type of like funky business or just like overcharge uh, their hyperland dot file because uh, the hyperland dot file made by Garuda were full of effect. And I was thinking like, maybe this is impacting the results somehow. So what we did, we decided to erase this distro installation, switch to Cache OS, redo the bench on hyperland as clean as we could. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, the result was the same. <laughs> Long story short, uh, I was like, maybe Garuda like team did something wrong there, but they did not. So all the recording, everything is available online. You can go see it on my live stream out there. But yeah, um, nothing to see there. On Cache OS, Hyperland, I went through all the configuration file, make sure that everything related to NVIDIA was well configured. And it was, I did add all the little like variable environment stuff related to NVIDIA and we double check everything was set up correctly. So what I'm going to do as always for the newcomer, I'm going to share my hardware, the hardware which has been used for those benchmark and we're going to go straight into it. And also before I forget, I did remove some games from the benchmark list because I thought they were not super reliable in terms of result. Like it was fluctuating everywhere. And um, yeah, so the game I removed were Valheim. Valheim was a little bit funky somehow. And uh, GTA 5 too, I removed it because it was a little bit hard uh, to do the bench and it was kind of like funky. So I, ju I just bypass it. And the last one I removed too was Monster Hunter Wild because I don't want to spend like, like, I don't know, like, like 10 minutes or 15 minutes compiling shaders each time I reinstall the game. Uh, no thanks. So let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You know, this one is one of my favorites with a certain game we do on the live stream. We'll talk about it here. But yes, I love this benchmark. It's running native. And here right away, you can see that on KDE, we were running at 340 FPS average, 344 exactly, with a minimum on 273. While switching to Hyperland, we went down to 317 FPS average and a minimum of 256 for the minimum. So we lost almost like 8% on the average and around like 6.2% on uh, the minimum. Yeah, pretty, pretty rough for Hyperland on this one. So the next game is Battlebeat Remastered. And on this specific benchmark here, Hyperland is ahead by 2.8%. 
So this benchmark is not like a real benchmark including within the game, but I still believe it's pretty representative of the type of experience you're gonna get. Here, Hyperland is 3% faster than KDE. I do believe it could be noted as a margin of error, uh, but still, uh, this is a win for Hyperland on this game. Next, we have Borderland 3. Ultra settings, proper benchmark, running through Proton. In this one, the performance difference is also around margin of error, with an average of 234 FPS for KDE and 228 FPS for Hyperland. So Hyperland is losing here uh, around like, uh, you know, 2.6% versus KD, nothing dramatic, but uh, still a lose, I will call it margin of error, like uh, the, the previous one. Counter-Strike 2 is the next one. So here, 1414p, setting to high, reflex off. So for KD, we are around like 581 FPS average and a minimum of 302. When we switch to Hyperland, here we got a significant a reduction in terms of FPS for the average uh, because we slow down to 518 FPS but for the minimum uh, we have a little bump to 312 FPS so this is also like uh, one of those benchmarks when I'm like mm, uh, something funky is going on here uh, the performance diff on average is minus 10% on Hyperland but uh, we have a plus 3.3% increase for the minimum. So uh, this benchmark, I would say that I've noticed some discrepancies sometimes, uh, especially I have to run it like multiple times to make sure like I grab the maximum performance. And here what I would say is like on the minimum, like both of the D are equal, but for the average FPS, even if it's uh, minus 11%, I will still take it with a grain of salt because sometimes I notice some discrepancy but we'll see with the next benchmark if we have this type of like a difference uh, regarding average and minimum. Now if we are looking at Cyberpunk 2077 uh, the game is setting in ultra with DLSS for perf here and we are running the in-game benchmark. Uh, what you can see is that uh, for the average we are 201 FPS on KDE versus 192 FPS on Hyperland, which is a lose for Hyperland for around like 4.5%. And when you look at the minimum, the minimum for KDE is around 169 FPS. <laughs> 169, I like this one. Um, and 166 for Hyperland. So around like 2.3% uh, loss for Hyperland here. A little bit behind again here i would say like margin of error for the minimum fps uh, almost like five percent uh, on average we kind of see a trend here like you notice that uh, the average is always like a little bit under when it comes to hyperland and i know a lot of you guys uh, watching <laughs> this video are not going to be happy because we have a lot of like hyperland fanboys in the community that's for sure so for deadlock here the results are pretty clear. We have an average of 370 for KDE and 350 for Hyperland, uh, which is another lose for Hyperland with minus 5.4% in terms of FPS. And we are at the middle of the bench right now and you can see some trend, right? So uh, if you are an Hyperland lover, like please come down, <laughs> come down. I know you are on your seat, like, getting crazy about those results but it's actually pretty funny to see that hyperland is kind of like under kg so far will the rest of the game save it well there is only one way to find out for dirt rally 2 here we went through the benchmark and again kd is running at 304 fps on average versus Hyperland, which is running 294 FPS average. So it's a loss of minus 3.45% for Hyperland on 
the average FPS for this game. And when you look at the minimum FPS, we are at 253 on KDE versus 243 on Hyperland. And guess what? Minus 4.23% for Hyperland. So we are still not winning on Hyperland, which honestly was, was quite surprising. But yeah, it is what it is. Moving on to Hitman. Here, using the benchmark, this is the second win for Hyperland and the first win with an integrated benchmark. Yes, Hyperland won. Uh, and it won uh, by uh, 0.97%. So this one, my opinion, is really like margin of error. I would call them equal. But I believe that uh, this benchmark is actually pretty accurate. And the difference here is only like 3 FPS. Uh, if you look at KD, it was 263 uh, FPS and 266 FPS on Hyperland. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. So here, uh, again, like we have like some interesting results with KD running at 295 FPS average versus 275 FPS average on Hyperland. And it's a staggering difference of 6.8% between the two. So Hyperland is behind. Again, um, yeah, that's it's pretty surprising. Guardian of the Galaxy here, proper benchmark. I did rerun them twice because I noticed that when you run the benchmark for the first time, well, it's kind of like choppy and you have like a big dip uh, at the beginning of the benchmark. So I rerun them twice. And here we have the same trend with an average of 242 FPS for KDE versus 226 average FPS on Hyperland. For the minimum, they are the same, uh, which was good with a minimum FPS of 144 for above desktop environment. But what I would say is that the difference for the average is around the same here, minus 6.6% uh, on the average FPS. So yes, Hyperland is again behind. The next game, Horizon Zero Down. So here we have an average FPS of 257 on KDE versus 249 on Hyperland, which is around like minus 3.1% average for Hyperland. Uh, regarding the minimum, we have the same amount of FPS for the, the minimum of 104 on both uh, desktop environments here. So Hyperland is again behind. So it's 3%. We could consider it as margin of error. But also on this game, I noticed that like, it's pretty like accurate each time. I, I did some tests, like there is no like that much of like of a difference. So yes, uh, again, uh, another lose for Hyperland. And the last game in this benchmark is Path of Exile 2. And this one, uh, I have my special spot, my special save, and I check the FPS. So for KDE, we were an average at 421 FPS. Pretty solid. But when you move to Hyperland, we move to 365 FPS. And this one was a huge surprise because we lost minus 13% on this game, moving from KD to Hyperland, which is pretty insane. Like I have to say, it's, it's pretty insane for this game. Uh, we did try multiple times and we we're kind of like, how? How, how did this happen? Well, here it is. I've, I've kind of have a hard time to explain it because if you look at the overall result there, will be more around like minus three to minus six percent. But Path of Exile went really like all the way like uh, in that direction with a minus 13 percent. So I will say I will take this one with a grain of salt, guys. So yes, I have to be honest with you guys. I was kind of like hesitating before like pushing this video uh, because I didn't want to be fighting the Hyperland lover out there. I know the community is pretty aggressive, uh, but that's my result. I had to double check everything uh, on my live stream to make sure I did not make any mistake. But I don't believe I did any mistake regarding the configuration because there is still some game which are performing the same within the benchmark. And there is something happening uh, with Hyperland, or at least like with this release of Hyperland, 
because if we look back at my previous test, Hyperland was actually performing very, very well uh, versus KDE at the time I tried it. And uh, I have to say, like, I've been super surprised by those results. So now let's talk at the result overall and look at the average for all those games. So how slower is Hyperland versus KDE when it comes to average? So when it comes to average, we are around like 5% slower on Hyperland versus KDE. That's the first thing. When it comes to the minimum in-game, it's around like 2%. So this could be margin of error. Uh, it's, it's quite significant towards the average, a little bit less uh, for the minimum. That will be like the whole story uh, behind those benchmark. Uh, but again, like I was, I was really surprised to see that uh, Hyperland was not performing uh, as good as it was before uh, relatively to, to, to KD. So guys, how do I conclude this one? This one is a tough one because yes, on paper, Hyperland is slower than KD. Uh, 5% average uh, to like 1.6% for the minimal. Uh, you know, nah. You, well, you will be still able to play your favorite game on Hyperland and have a ton of fun. I'm guessing again, like if you are running Hyperland right now, uh, it's not for gaming principally, like it will be more for you know, the Windows manager, like everything related to it, the, uh, the way like Hyperland, like uh, change your whole experience on your PC. Uh, but again, like uh, you're, you're going to put uh, some performance on the side, right? 5% is not that bad, but uh, yes, you know, if you are at 60 FPS on a certain game, you're just barely going there, and now you lose 5%, well, guess what? You're not at 60 FPS anymore. And it might change maybe your, your gaming experience. Um, for me, I would consider it like uh, still a great DE when it comes to gaming. Uh, but again, like uh, if you don't want to lose performance, I think you're going to have to go uh, to KG. Something, however, I want to mention though. Um, when it comes to those benchmark, you have to understand that I'm taking like a, a screenshot, I would say, of what is actually happening in KDE and Hyperland at this specific moment of time, right? And it was the same with GNOME and, and KDE. Uh, Linux is, a, a, <laughs> I would say, like has a lot of moving parts, right? So, uh, you know, sometimes it's a driver issue. Sometimes it could be a little issue that's going to be patched in the next days, month. Something is going to be corrected. Uh, so, again, like, don't, don't freak out. <laughs> uh, Hyperland user, I see you guys. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's, that's the result as they were. And, and I felt like I, I needed to, to share them with you guys. Uh, I don't have specific color Rico here again. Like it's exactly the same like uh, feedbacks that I will have um, with Hyperland or Gnome or KD. Uh, just use what you want. Just use those D for the feature first uh, because the performance itself, uh, again, like it can be discutable. Uh, there is certain game where we saw like performance more in the ten percent. Uh, those games, I would say, like if you are mainly playing those games and you feel like you are struggling with Hyperland, then I would recommend to, to move to another D. I know it sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, I hope the, the dev from uh, Hyperland are going to be able to look at this and maybe try to reproduce my result and uh, maybe fix them. That's it, that's all, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget the little thumb up. Don't forget to subscribe. Really helps the channel. Uh, I want to thank all the members of La Crème de la Crème Club, whether you are on Patreon or YouTube membership or direct donating via PayPal. You guys are the best. Thank you very much for your support and see you on the next one. Bisous, bisous. Or should I say like in the next one? Well, anyways, take care, guys. <laughs>